Hey, Tyler Price here with Style Pro. Uh, today we have Eduardo Yamas uh, with us. Uh, Eduardo's great stylist here in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Uh, and uh, before we get going, uh, we got a hat for Eduardo. Everyone gets one of these hats. I think they're pretty cool. It's got the bug on it. It's got Style Pro on it. And hopefully you'll uh, wear it at some point. But uh, well, all right, Pro. Style Pro. <clears throat> so Eduardo is a. Uh, how long have you been out of school? Um, since June, June, July, August, so about six months. About six months. Yeah. So he's out living the dream of uh, working in a salon, doing some assisting right now, and it's a booth rent salon otherwise, right? Yep. Okay. So you grew up in small, small town, Idaho. How how big was your high school? Uh, when I graduated, um, student body like as a whole was two hundred. Two hundred in high high school. Yeah. yeah, I graduated with 40 something in my class. 40 people in your class. Well, yeah. you know, but you grew up small town Idaho, but had a dream, maybe. Yeah. I mean, back then, did you know you wanted to be a hairstylist? You know, I contemplated the thought of it. I did, but I was actually following a different dream at the time, which one of other my other dreams is photography. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was kind of the one, and hairstylist was kind of, maybe one day I should do that. Yeah, and then we met how many years ago? The first time we met was in 2008 or 9, was when I was graduating high school and I was seeing my options of what to do after high school. And so I toured Austin Cade with you, um, and at the same time I was looking into photography at a college. Yeah, and then it was to get to where you're at now, and you're still, you know, you're still early in your career, mm -hmm. but there was this path that wasn't maybe traditional yeah so tell us a little bit about you know how'd you get started what were some of the challenges you had and why did you keep going so I mean I it start it all started with I reason I went to traditional college was because I got scholarships so I had scholarships I wasn't gonna let those go to waste I thought it was a great opportunity um, for myself um, so but traditional college was not made for me yeah. Um, so I'm, I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm artistic, I'm, uh, I'm create, very creative mind, so it wasn't for me. So I uh, didn't, didn't finish, came back home, looked for just a job, um, and started working. Started working at a place where I was just pushing paperwork, and at first it was great. I mean, I got promotions, and I was doing great, and I paid the bills, and, but there came a time when I was like, this is really, really boring. And, you, and, and someone would have paid you for the rest of your life and mm -hmm. at the end of it, given you a gold watch and said, thank you. Thank you for making me richer. Yep. yep. And, and, but, I mean, and there's security in that. There's nothing wrong with that, no. right? No, no, there's no, it's definitely, it was very, it was comforting to know I had a paycheck coming, I had a job going, um, but it just wasn't fulfilling for me inside of it. To me, it was just a place I had to go to make money and I wanted something, I wanted to enjoy each day of my life and so I went out and, pers and, and said, I'm gonna pursue something else, I'm gonna look for something else. So I came across an ad that Austin Kate Academy was hiring um, for a receptionist. So I applied, I had an interview, your wife and uh, Julie were hiding, weren't hiding, they, I just had no clue they were on the other side of the wall. <laughs> and. Um, so they were on the other side of the wall, and they were listening to the whole interview, and they stepped out after the interview and said, we would love for you to work here, we actually see growth for you aside from this. Yeah. Because the challenge was was coming from a life of like, you know, a, a secure paycheck, and secure hours was, okay, you're gonna have a cut in hours, and you're gonna have a cut in pay, and this yeah. was me. Oh, I need it. Yeah. And, um, but, you know what I said, I was looking for something else, so I'm gonna do it. Yeah, and, and I do think people kind of, as they start to pursue it, whatever it is, there's a, a curveball that might there be is. thrown. And that was my curveball. Yeah. And so, I did it, and I, it was the best decision I ever made. Yeah. I, um, shortly after, I think it was two months after you offered me um, a better position for a school you guys were opening, and so I took that, and it was a whole new challenge, and it was, and it was totally, um, it was totally awesome um, to to experience that and do that. And um, but I found myself again 
feeling this isn't fulfilling enough for me so I actually intend to try to go to school in your uh, one of your campuses and at the time the position I had um, it just was not it was unworkable it was yeah. just it was too much I was I had too much going on and it was just hard for me to work go to school and sustain everything else in my life and so I wasn't able to pursue it so um, I was like hey what what's next then and what's next was Phoenix yeah so you moved from Idaho to Arizona I moved from Idaho, Arizona um, went out there I worked a few different jobs I did a call center I did retail and guess where I found myself at again another <laughs> hair school yeah <laughs> doing the same job yeah and I just and so I thought maybe it's just maybe it's just I need to change a city you know doing the same thing and it wasn't it it wasn't it I actually worked for one school and then got an offer to go to another school and that other school is very similar in the aesthetic to Austin Cade and boy did it make me miss Austin Cade yeah so yeah. Well, good I actually good. talked to you I don't know if you remember this I talked to you and I actually talked to Allison about it and I was telling you guys how I was feeling about how you know um, I'm like they're offering me this but I actually feel like I wish I actually could just be a student and you guys were like come home yeah yeah no and we that's kind of you know I not to say how great we are but uh, but we we definitely are interested in our students and our staff kind of finding what makes them tick and it's not mm -hmm. it's not just about how do you make me money it's about where's your what what is your it what what's driving you and let's what's figure out how to make you, that because yeah. because we've had great employees mm -hmm. that ultimately left to open their own salons and different things like that uh, and it's and it's hard to give up great employees right so so anyway you came back you went through school so this whole process of chasing your dream and, and you still did photography though right I've never stopped doing photography yeah. um, it's just one of those photography is actually one of those things that uh, I think it's because I think it's like one of those things it's, it's a hobby slash dream dream yeah. I could never do it full-time but that's what I love is that I can do what I do for the school which is graphic design and digital marketing I can do which I enjoy yeah I can do my hair and I can do photography but I'm always doing something I'm passionate about yeah it's not I get back to what it was which was you know uh, pushing paperwork or something I just wasn't truly enjoying if right. that makes sense yeah and so then you you came back you finished I up came school back. I actually lived at the school yeah um, I was yeah I was pulling in uh, I don't know 12 14 hour days at the school because I would work and go to school I was doing both full time um, but it never felt did you know that it never felt like a lot of people would ask me how are you doing it like are you like killing yourself and yeah. I was like no not really because I was doing two different things I maybe was in the same building but I was two different things but I pushed myself through school um, if you attend Austin Kid full-time you finish within 13 months yeah if you stick to the schedule um, I actually finished in 11 yeah um, so I was done early on immediately um, started you know was getting closer to figuring out what I was gonna do after I was like I'm not just gonna wait around so I was offered a, a assisting position at Generation Salon and then also you know to have my own station there yeah. so I've so been you, there six months so you get to assist a, a very talented stylist in our uh, city uh, Sarah Hart Sarah. and you so you get to learn from someone who's been successful at it oh and you get to do your own thing in addition to so that's kind of like the ideal situation yeah. quite honestly mm -hmm. not everyone gets that opportunity Nope. right sometimes no. they get thrown to the wolves and it's like sink or swim so just letting you know you're you're, you're pretty blessed to I oh I, I count my blessings yeah. I truly am blessed and it's from you know it, it just my whole life I've been really, tr truly blessed yeah. but um, but you know what one thing I will say though is I think blessings come your way if you're putting it out there too yeah. if you're putting things out there for other people and also I think it also has to do with the fact that I truly am following my passion like I you know it's nothing is I feel like nothing is ever given to you have to work for right. it and so through school I really worked really hard to get to where I am yeah. you know I followed I followed um, everything you guys taught me I followed all the rules to get to where I am and same thing as soon as I got done with school I was like, okay let's do this next thing and yeah. keep working hard yeah no, and it is, I think you hit on a very important thing is some people look at it and go, oh, look how lucky he was. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at it and say, well, he was blessed and he was blessed because you were taking steps and it didn't, it didn't necessarily happen. Mm -hmm. 
ideally how you wanted it to happen, but it happens. But it happens. None, yeah. Nonetheless. So, you know, I, going to that salon, it had to do with the fact of I knew someone that worked there. Yeah. I had to go assist that person. And I, from, and when you go assist, um, it's part of it is, um, you know, being with a stylist and uh, watching them hair, you know, do haircuts or color and you, they answer questions. Um, but at the same time, you're also folding towels and you're cleaning the salon, you're doing other things. And so when I would go assist this other stylist, which is a former employee of yours, Tiffany, um, you know, when it was something that I didn't really need to be, be standing there to learn from, yeah. I didn't just stand around on my phone, I would, yeah. I would work. And so they saw that work ethic, and that's kind of what, what got me to be where I am, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so I think that's what I mean by like, sometimes like, you have to also work hard, um, no matter what you're doing, to get to where you want to get. And so you're kind of, sp- choosing to specialize in people that are having a pretty dramatic change in their life is that like your clients that kind of tends to be the type of transformation yeah Yeah, I love to do transformations I love to take somebody's um, you know what they've got going on and just completely give them a 180 Um, I'm uh, I, I don't know. It's my. It's my. It's what makes me excited. Yeah. Um. They're longer. They're longer appointments, but because it's like a total, total transformation. Um. And so yeah, it's. I love. I love to do everything else, but that's just kind of my niche, I guess. Yeah. Is seeing that transformation. I love to see the change. I love to see how different it's going to be. So you still have the soccer mom coming in and and the professional coming and getting their hair done but but you get people that are coming in and this is here we're gonna we're gonna transform you we're gonna take three maybe four hours and work on you and 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 you're being compensated well Mm -hmm. uh how does the client feel at the end of that you know it's actually really fulfilling because my my time that those three four hours are all yours It's, it's the clients but what i love the most i think is um the face of when they see the final results so what something i do is i actually at my salon you know we sit like this i turn my chair and i blow dry this way yeah there's no mirrors uh, okay yeah so i blow dry because <laughs> they see their hair wet when you see wet hair um especially and if you don't have a ton of like natural lighting in your salon um you're gonna see dark so yeah you know so i've had remember i've, I've had a few clients that are like <laughs> and in, in their minds i know they're going what did he do anything? Yeah, yeah. And so that's my favorite thing is for them to do that. So then I turn them, I start blow drying, and I tell them no peaking. Um, I blow dry, and depending on what it is, I'll either you know do some quick straightening on top, and then I'm gonna, and then I always mostly curl. But sometimes I'll show it to them straight so they can see what it looks like straight and then curl. Yeah. So but my favorite part is turning that chair and seeing the expression in their face. Yeah. It, that's just nothing more fulfilling to me than that. It's like you need a camera to capture it. To uh, I need that actually working on that to do that. Because um, yeah. I think that's the, one of the most fulfilling things for me is seeing there. And and uh, I, and then like I educate my the entire time that we're doing the, the service. I'm actually educating. I'm actually telling people like, this is what I'm doing now. This is why I put in things. All right. We had some technical <laughs> difficulties and now we're back. So... Oh, so, I was just explaining about. I try to, basically that's what it is. I just like to educate, I like to show them what things I'm using. Um, you know, talk to them about what they're using at home. Talking about how, what you know, if somebody that likes to go um, long uh, between long appointments, there are small appointments you can go in between sometimes to just kind of keep it refreshed and keep it looking good without having to make it an extensive appointment. Yeah. Um, so I'm always educating that. Or if I'm hair cutting, I'm teaching them why am I doing this why am I doing it this way and it's or when I even when I blow dry the products I'm using I just I don't know I like people to be informed and know know these things they should be yeah um just so that when they go out home and they know what to do I've had clients before um call me and ask me hey what product was that or you know you were talking about that brush or or things like that so they they call and ask me yeah so. so You, so you've been down this path and you find it very rewarding. It's taken you a while to get where you're at. You're at the beginning of your career. Uh, I believe you have a very bright future. Thank you. Okay. But what is your words of wisdom, kind of parting advice to somebody considering or someone that maybe is in the industry and just needs a little more fire? Like, what would you um, say to somebody? I'm going to tell you what a very young, wise woman told me once. If you are uncomfortable or if you are not uncomfortable or you are not almost like scared, you're not learning and you're not growing. 
So maybe what's happened is that you're at a standstill, whether it be in your job right now and you don't, and this is something you've been scared to do, um, or whether you're in the industry and you're bored. And it, that's what it is. It's you need to light a fire under yourself. So you need to step out of your comfort zone and do something different. Yeah. Um, so whether if it's quitting your job like what I did and taking a pay cut and taking pay cut hours, then do it. If it means that you're a stylist and you keep doing the same things over and over again, then it's trying to find new clients to do new things um, so that you have another, so that you can grow. So you can grow and that light and that fire that drives you just, you know, kind of ignites you that. I told Tyler this earlier today, I said, um, that happened to me today. I did some things today that I'm are in my comfort zone. And oh, I just made it for a great day because it was like oh, I remember why I like this. I yeah. remember why I love this industry. Yeah. So anybody that's just kind of contemplating on making a change or doing those things, it you gotta, is you gotta take the bullet. You gotta, you gotta. It's okay to be uncomfortable. It's it, yeah. you have to be uncomfortable. Yeah. If you're if if we pass our lives being comfortable the entire time, then we're not growing and we're not like exploring new things, and we can't see what we're potential we what potential we have. Yeah. Well, no, great, and, and thank you for your time because I know you got an appointment you got to get to. But uh, if people want to find you, where do they find you? Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, styled by Eduardo. Um, also, my phone number is 623-693-3542. Um, new clients. Um, I also I am very open to dialogue with other stylists about um, helping each other grow, about helping each other with questions even on... Um, other clients yeah you know, I do that with a few clients yeah. with a few stylists at the salon I do it with people in our community other stylists in the community and I think it's great well and Eduardo's a, a guy that my wife and I love and we're grateful that uh, we have gotten to know you over the past five years and a couple long. times where I wanted to strangle him a little bit but it's like all right just let him do it his way and it's worked and that's because because uh, you had to do it your you way. have to make you have to do it to your grow. way yep but anyway thanks for being here thank you and uh uh, check out Style Pro too, and look more for uh, riding around in the bug with other people too. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're just grateful to be here for another day.